from what I know, what excites me the most is the uh, the presence of, of more vampires, particularly those who were the first in the sire line from Klaus and uh, from Elijah and Rebecca, you know. Um, the first season was very much season of the witches, I, I, I think. I, I call it that because there was the harvest ritual, there was the four that rose, you know, and then the second season involved a lot of the parents. It was dealing with all of those issues. Ultimately, Klaus dealt with them by killing the parents, <laughs> some of them more than once, uh, and, 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 and his aunt. Um, but season three, it, you know, I've read the first three episodes and it's, it's very much more, thank you, very much more vampire centric. So uh, there's going to be some faces from their past that we haven't as an audience met before. Some of the first vampires they turned, some people who are very close to the family. So that, that's interesting to me to kind of delve into that world a little more. Uh, well, you know, n not very well. Not, <laughs> not the most emotionally well-balanced father, perhaps. He seems to have done a great job of alienating his entire family, uh, you know, possibly messing his daughter up beyond repair, even though she's yet to utter a syllable. Um, uh, so, yeah, he's, he's botching it up, good and proper. <laughs> But you know that I, I believe he he's trying. He you know I, I do believe that he's he's making an effort and, and often he acts you know in the interest of what he believes is the greater good and you know does things that uh, others would be afraid to do for the good of his family for the protection of his family. But uh, I I think it, it's it's questionable whether that those are the best courses of action. Yeah. Klaus is a villain, but all the fans are rooting for him to find love. Do you think he is ever going to like <laughs> let himself to fall in love with someone? I don't know, you know, I, I think one of the things that makes the character compelling for me is that he's very destructive and, and very guarded of his feelings. So he will allow himself to feel something for a moment and then he'll trample all over it because he doesn't want to uh, explain show any vulnerability, show any chink in the armor, you know. Uh, so I, I'm not sure, you know. And he started as a villain, but I, I suppose I like to think of the originals as a kind of transformation to at least anti-hero. If not hero, anti-hero, you know. I don't, I don't think we can go as far as to call him a hero yet, but, but he, uh, you know, he, he allows him, he has those little moments with his daughter and, um, you know, just beats where you believe like maybe he's capable of some humanity before he you know toasts Elijah's girlfriend or I don't know curses Haley or whatever yeah. and Klaus and Kenny have always kind of had a special relationship but we kind of saw it grow especially in the last couple episodes of season two um how much I guess do they interact in the, these early episodes for season three and are we going to see that you know relationship develop even more not necessarily romantically but just like kind of be that, that it's kind of that connection to his humanity I, I agree with you and you know in the beginning when we cast the originals you know I did readings with different people and they were trying to cast Cammy and they talked about her being a love interest potentially for Klaus and potentially for Marcel and I really believe uh, the characters de develop far beyond that you know she's uh she's involved in the human faction you know with with the humans against all the the other factions the witches vampires the wolves and so on she's also become somewhat of a therapist for klaus he's able to vent to her she understands uh the motives behind his actions which most would call evil i think in a, in a way which he finds refreshing hence his visits to her and his talks to her and yeah so at the beginning of season three certainly we find her um being a sort of sounding board for him and, and, and therapizing him to a certain extent. Um, though I, f I believe it's, I think she believes it's, it's sort of her duty that nobody else, you know, he can turn to nobody else and she has to be there to, to, to curb his behavior a little bit and to try and talk some sense into him, yeah. <laughs> Hi. Well, I love it. I mean, I did a lot of period drama when I started in my career in Britain, and for a, for a time, I thought that's that was my job. Like, I just do period drama. You know, it took a long time before I put on jeans and t-shirts to film anything. But um, 
Yeah, it's great. I mean, it's more work because the costumes and the wigs and the, you know, the, the look of it all. But I really, really love the opportunity to play all these different eras in one show. And so, yeah, it's always exciting. It's, um, it adds a kind of you, you, an overused buzzword, but like an epic quality to the show, which I think is important. Uh, and yeah, we do. I mean, you know, I, I like I said, I've read the first few episodes, and there's flashbacks involved in that, you know, in those, um, which are very exciting, especially the first episode. Very exciting. Yes, new eras. Yeah, yeah. And and rumours of new eras. I'm hearing whispers of new eras that we haven't visited yet as well. So I'm excited about all of that. You know, though, please God, not the 80s. <laughs> let's, uh, please, let's not do that. I don't know. If, or the, or the 70s, I don't know if bell bottoms and an afro is going to suit class. <laughs> 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 the show moving to three seasons is going to be on after the Vampire Diaries. Thank goodness, we're finally home, right? I mean, wasn't, isn't that where, when, I, when we heard we were getting a spin-off, I thought, logically, of course, we'll be after Vampire Diaries. That's, and then, you know, then the second season came and it's like, okay, this year, this year it's going to be, and yet we were paid, paired with Jane the Virgin, which I still don't understand. So, yeah, Thursdays, I feel, is where... We've always felt that would be our home, and finally we're there, so very happy with that, yeah. Well, do you think that should or could lead to some crossovers? Potentially. I mean, you know, I'll be honest with you, That's we still ask that question quite frequently, and, uh, you know, the truth of the matter is, I don't know, I can say perhaps. I know that the worlds are still existing, they're, they're on the same timeline, so there's potential there. Uh, I know that what both shows don't want to do is lose momentum. So if one, if Damon coming to New Orleans slowed down their storyline and slowed down ours so that we could have this Damon Salvatore episode, I think they'd be reluctant to do it. Although, by the way, that's my pitch. Damon Salvatore comes to New Orleans. Klaus calls in an old friend. Who walks in? Damon. <laughs> I pitched it to Julie a number of times, so we'll see. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, there's always potential, right? I know they're open to it, at least. That's the first time I've ever been asked that question. Uh, if I could choose to be any superhero woman, I would be... Um, Rogue from the X-Men, but not from the films, from the comic books, where she'd kind of taken Miss Marvel's powers and she could fly and had the super strength as well as the, uh, the, the you know, the curse of not being able to touch anyone. I always felt like she was the most kind of tortured, tragic superhero woman. And I think they should have done that with the films, given her those powers, although maybe that would have required a lot more backstory and would have been diff difficult to incorporate in the films. So yeah, there we go.